Hi guys, Mrs. Hall here again. This module is on removal of secretions from the respiratory tract, the pharynx and trachea. Why do we do this? We do it in order to clear the airway, collect sputum for diagnostic testing, preventing pneumonia, and also to aid ventilation. Depending on the needs of the patient, the particular um, ailment that the patient has. So what do we want to do in order to prepare? For a patient who has a scheduled suctioning, you make sure that you know who that patient is. Identify the patient. Introduce yourself. Let that patient know exactly what's happening, what to expect. Then you move on to doing vital signs. Make sure you establish level of consciousness, their ability to cough, oxygen saturation, their breath sounds. If you have a patient that's asking you for suctioning, all of this stuff will be happening very, very fast. So there's no, there's no real rule set that you have to stop one, two, three, four, five. But if there is no emergency, you want to make sure that you get these things done. So after you've already let the patient know what's to come, what you're going to do is to go in to, to um, get hand hygiene done. But remember, you must prepare. Go ahead to the slush room, prepare your trolley, make sure that everything's okay. We've done hand hygiene before in a previous video and that is linked in the description box below. So you come back, you provide privacy for your patient, you make sure that you have everything that you need. In this case, you're going to need your sterile tray, your suction, your suction machine, your suction tubing. You're going to need your sterile and unsterile gloves and some PPE to protect yourself because your patient might just cough while we're doing this procedure. We've gone through how the suction machine works before in a previous video, so we will not cover that at this moment. We will simply cover just the suctioning. Also, we've gone through opening your sterile tray, which is also covered in a video linked in the description box below. So first of all, we try to prepare by going ahead and making sure that we open our sterile tray. Check your date, check your sterility of everything. Be sure that you are ready. You want to make sure that you have your saline and your lubricant ready as well. There are lubricant that comes in um, little containers that we can just pop one open and put it in our sterile tray. And there are also lubricant that comes in, bo in bottles, larger bottles that you would have to dole out. In this case, I'm going to be doling out some. Now, for this procedure, we're going to have one sterile hand and one clean hand. So you're going to notice that I threw out the, the um, suction tubing with the end off on the one inch barrier that we are considering to be on sterile. So in this case, now I'm going to prepare myself to just get the, um, to get the, 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 the sterile tray open and I have officially began to put my gloves on wrong, but we still made it through being sterile. And in sharing these videos, one of the things that was mentioned is that the nurse is talking. In this case, the nurse needs to be talking because it is a teaching video. So what we're doing is we're continuing to maintain that sterile field and we go ahead and open up the tray put our bowls where they need to be now i have one sterile hand one clean hand i'll take my lube put some out and i make sure that i loosened my container earlier so that i can take off the cap and put the cap with the bottom down I've checked my container, check, checked that the fluid is correct, made sure that I have checked the date on that. I'm going to pour it, make sure that I don't wet the, the um, material. So now I know that I am not going to have um, 
I'm not going to have a unsterile area because I've wet it. Now I've grabbed my tubing, hold it by there and connect it to the suction machine. Remember I have a clean hand and I have a sterile hand. So once I've got that connected, I will go ahead and make sure that I measure just about how far down I would want that to go with my patient. You go from the air to the nose, from the nose to the neck, and that gives you approximately how far down is your maximum that you can go. Just lube the end of it, and then we are going to go into the nair. Once we go in, we want to make sure that we go along the floor of the nasal passage and we just go gently and do not force it. So we would put the machine on and go all the way in as far as we should have go. This finger. And then we are going to pinch this right here. This is the suction. You don't want to suction for more than 10 seconds. You pull coming out while you're suctioning and then you can rinse it off in the sterile saline water. You might want to put a little bit more lube and then we can go back in there staying on the floor of the nasal passage. And then once we go in, we create suction by closing off. Remember not to stay longer than 10 seconds and we come back out. So that completes our suctioning. Right there, we rinsed it off because when we're coming back up, we might be pulling back some thick mucus. So this is the reason why we do that. Now notice that we're handling the same material with a sterile hand and a clean hand. That is what we need to make sure that we pay attention to. If you were suctioning in the mouth, it would be a similar procedure. Your patient would have to be a whole lot more cooperative. Most times we have unconscious patients with um, a tube down the throat so we can just go in along the tube and come back out without having any kind of obstruction or the patient gagging or anything like that. All right, so once we're finished from there, we've done our suctioning. Our suctioning is not supposed to last anything longer than five minutes. The entire procedure must not last longer than five minutes you must not suction longer than 10 seconds at a time. Always be ready to administer oxygen if it is necessary and you make sure that you maintain your sterile versus your clean hand. So when you're finished, as usual, you clean up. So what we're doing now is we are taking off the suction tubing and we are getting rid of it inside of the sterile glove. We make sure that we get rid of all our stuff because now we are done. We are going to re wheel our trolley back into the slush room. Make sure that your patient is comfortable. You clean them up, you remove the, tra the pad from under the head, you make sure that everything is, their, their oxygen saturation has started to come back up, if not already returned back to its normal state and after you're done making them comfortable and ensuring that they can indeed um, exchange oxygen well you go ahead and you do your hand washing again and that is the entire procedure for removal of secretions from the respiratory tract